What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and in today's review I'm going to be taking a look at the Transformers movie masterpiece MPM 10 Starscream. Our first masterpiece of 2020 and a masterpiece that has been rumoured for so long. It's great to finally have this figure in hand. So without further ado, let's get straight on into the review. So here we have Starscream fully transformed up into his F-22 Raptor and I think that Hasbro and Takarotomi have done an amazing job of recreating Starscream's appearance from the first live action Transformers movie. Movie. Now the main difference between Starscream from his first movie appearance when compared to his appearances in both Revenge of the Fallen and Dark of the Moon was that his jet was completely clean. It didn't have any of the Cybertronian tattoos that we would see in later films. A look that in my opinion actually makes Starscream a little bit more visually interesting. But nevertheless I think that the actual sculpting and detailing looks fantastic. You can see here that we've got a really nice orange translucent cockpit here with some super cool interior detailing. Detailing what the inside of an F-22 Raptor would actually look like. So I think that that's an amazing amount of detail there and you can see here all of the sculpted in panel lining with the different camouflage paint apps over the top I think that all looks very authentic to a real-life jet You can see here that we do have weapon storage for both his minigun and this does indeed rotate However, I'll cover this more when we do get Starscream up into his robot mode and flipping under to the underside You can see these small rubbery fins that stick out which is indeed accurate to a real-life representation So that's super cool and I do like the different contrasts between this almost navy blue color that they're going with as well as the darker grey plastic. I've got to say that in jet mode Starscream does look very visually interesting with all of these camo details on him. I think that this is definitely where that camo detailing shines. It is something which slightly detracts from his colour scheme when we get into robot mode which I'll showcase later on through the review. But here for jet mode I think that it looks super nice. You can see very crisp detailing here for the rear end of the jet and you've got the USAF logo there as well as the USAF logo on the opposite wing. That's all super cool. Turning under to the undercarriage, we do indeed get landing gear. I won't retract these until we get him into transformation. But you can see here that he does have landing gear and all of these roll really nicely. So you can indeed roll Starscream on a flat surface. So that's definitely a nice attention to detail. Just removing his weapons and giving you a closer look, a more cleaner look at the jet. You can see that the missile launcher does store via this tab and the port underneath the wing, as well as the buzz saw it pegs in in the exact same mechanism via the tab and the port under the wing. And I do think that the minigun actually looks quite cool underneath the jet, but of course we can remove that and that once again is held in via a very similar tab and slot mechanism. So you can see here that the jet mode, whilst it may not be the cleanest, I think that they have done a commendable job here. Of course, all of the transformable characters that do have jets as their alt modes are always going to have undercarriage. And with movie characters, seeing as the designs are so much more complex than cartoon characters is of course going to be ever so slightly worse but I think that they have done quite a nice job it definitely does look rather compact and quite honestly I don't notice anything that's obvious that this is indeed a transformer other than when you do turn under to the underside and you can see the legs clearly folded up but I think everything else does compact fairly nicely turning to the rear end of the jet these sections here which do actually become part of the torso area of Starscream these almost act as thrusters which I think is quite a nice attention to detail quite a nice distribution of robot Robot mode parts and you can once again see some nice detailing here of where the intakes would be for the jet so overall I think that it is a very sleek and awesome looking jet mode for a size comparison here we have MPM 10 compared next to the studio series Starscream both of course based on their first movie appearance I won't be comparing MPM Starscream in his jet mode to the original ROTF leader just as as figures begin to age over time some of the tabs begin to become slightly more brittle and I just do not want to risk breaking such an awesome figure so these are the only jet mode comparisons that you will be shown here in jet mode but you can see here the substantial size difference between the Voyager Studio Series and the extremely large NPM release and the extra amount of detail that the NPM series does in fact pack in you can see here that just comparing them they almost look as if though they are vastly different jets I still think the Studio Series is quite a nice figure and when you compare them the jet cable actually looks as if though it stores a little bit better on the Studio Series version I do still think that they are really awesome and of course this figure has got a significantly lower budget than the rather more expensive MPM release but definitely super cool looking jet modes in their own right. And with everything covered now for Starscream's jet mode let's turn to his transformation. So to begin with you're going to want to take this fin here and just collapse it down, flip under to the underside of Starscream and just collapse his landing gear there and then these ones here they just compress inwards just like so now what we can do is if you turn your attention here these clips actually do store within this so what you're going to want to do is try your best to pry these open on both sides and then that will just free up everything 
and then we can bring this whole section and rotate this to the back. We'll work here on the legs first, so you're going to want to separate the legs, rotate those here and rotate those here, ratchet them downwards here for both sides. Now what we can proceed to do is if I just create for some clearance, you're going to want to ratchet this outwards and then bring this section down. And now you can see here a tab that will peg into the slot in here. You're going to want to tap that in and ensure that the knee pad is pulled forward. It is on a spring-loaded mechanism, so you are going to have to push it forwards. And once that's done, we can proceed to chicken leg the leg back. It just makes it a lot easier when transforming the figure and it doesn't become a problem later on during the transformation. We can then take this part of the leg and rotate this around and of course collapse the ratchet joint. Here, what you're going to want to do is flip out these toes and then just disengage this slot from this tab. And then we're going to want to lift up this section here. And now what we can do is untab that, reverse this around, and that tab will peg into a slot in here. And then this tab will plug into a slot under there. So it's a lot of compression, clip that into place, and then clip that into place and that is one of Starscream's legs fully transformed up so of course it's the exact same process here for the opposite side so just disengage that and you can see what I was talking about in regards to the knee pad you are going to want to put your finger there otherwise if you don't it will not peg in and you will probably break this so just untap that and then now just ratchet these down and clip that firmly into place we can then take this section rotate this around and compress this, untab the foot, and then extend this joint from within, rotate this around, fold out this section, and then once again, just compress the foot all the way down until all of the necessary tabs are pegged in together. And there we have the entire lower region of Starscream fully transformed up. And now this is an issue that I have encountered is that these pieces always want to pop off, especially if you knock them in the wrong way, which isn't a major deal breaker as I've managed to transform this figure more times without popping them off than I have with them popping off. But it is definitely something to be cautious of. So I will attach this later on. As you can see, the clearance is rather difficult to get to that area. But now what you'll do here is you'll come to these sections and they do actually tab into these slots here. So you're just going to want to lift that section up. And now if we turn under to the underside we can just begin to loosen all of these up the arms do peg in via these slots here and some tabs on the back of the arms so just loosen all of this up and get all of this out of the way take this section lift this up and just orientate this all out of the way we can then come to these wings collapse this section in and then collapse this section in also now what we'll do is flip around to the underside take these sections here lift this up and then pull this all back. And you're going to want to hinge this all the way back on this double hinge joint and just collapse this down here for now. Open up the thrusters, pull out this section and then collapse the thrusters in. We can sort the orientation of this out later on during the transformation. Flip back around and if the arms have become in the way, just rotate those out. And you can see in here, this tab here and this tab here will plug into some slots on the back section of this piece and then just collapse this all in and give this a really nice firm push and snap all that together. Now, just rising the camera up, what we'll do is fold out this section and then bring this all the way down and that will lock into place. With this now done, we can take this piece and just pull this away from the body. Take these sections here and bring those all the way down. So repeat the same process, fold out these sections Take this piece here and extend it. You can see here that for transformation is recessed. You're going to want to take it and pull it out ever so slightly. Fold the cockpit back up and then this piece will collapse over the top of that. Now what we can do here is actually one of the more enjoyable parts of this transformation. Take this piece and just fold this up. And you can see there a tab that this slot here will go into. So just snap that into place. And repeat the same process here for the opposite side. Just snap that into place turn around to the back of Starscream and then these sections here are going to want to orientate upwards just to get them out of the way so just lift these sections up and now we can take the arms detach them from this section swing that out and ratchet these down collapsing these pieces forwards we can then take the arm and lift this all up and this will snap into place fold out Starscream's fingers and then just rotate this around in whatever orientation you so desire. With that now done, in here you can see that you're going to want to lift this piece up and you can saw earlier on where this bit actually came untapped. So what you'll do here 
is you'll just move this out to the side and then bringing this piece up, you'll just tab this into place and swing this down. And in here, you can see a groove, shoot that in there and then push down on that and then that will lock all nicely into place. And then just move the wing out of the way. And that is one section of Starscream's body completed. And now we just finish off the opposite side. So just take all this and separate all this out of the way. Ratchet this down, collapse this section. Take the arm here and you're just going to want to compress that, snap that into place, pull the arm out. And then very similarly to earlier on, hinge this out of the way. Take this section here, rotate this inwards, lift this section back up fold out this tab and now you can just align that up and shoot this section in there a lot easier on this one on this side and then ensure that these pieces here stay tabbed together as they do like to come undone which is unfortunate take this crutch plate here snap that all nice and securely into place just align everything appropriately we can then come to the back and just orientate the wings you're then going to want to take this fold this down and that does create a tab that this slot here will tab into so just snap that all into place hinge all of this out of the way now what we'll do is take these sections here and you just want to fold them over the top to lock and secure this whole back section in so just give this all a nice compression and then we can orientate all of this to our desire and then for some final touches I should have perhaps have done this earlier on but just Fold out these rather rubbery sections and they are double layered so fold this section down as well and then repeat the same process here for this side. And that is the fully transformed MPM-10 Movie Star Scream in his awesome looking robot mode. And so here we have the brand new MPM-10 Starscream fully transformed up in his gloriously detailed looking robot mode. There is no denying that despite some of this figure's flaws, and believe me I will get into them, that this is by far the best and most accurate representation we've ever got for Starscream, at least a transformable representation. I think that Hasbro and Takara have completely knocked it out of the ballpark with this release in terms of how accurate they've managed to get a rather complex design. Bear in mind that this Starscream is one of the more angular, one of the more obscure designs out of the Bayverse and considering he turns into an authentic jet I think they've done a really nice job just giving you a full 360 degree rotation of this even the back on this figure is sculpted and has been created amazingly the thrust the detailing all of the panels on the back as well as the detailing here is indeed movie accurate I have compared this to the 3A Dark of the Moon star screen and whilst their colors may be different their designs are exactly the same and I think that Hasbro and Takara have done just such an amazing job on this figure so without further ado we'll get into the figures detail then we'll go for articulation talk accessories and then we'll go through some comparisons turning to details we'll of course start off with the top here we've got Starscream's head and you can see that this has been created beautifully. Hasbro have always been able to capture Starscream's head design really well especially in the studio series and in the original ROTF leader and here is no exception. You can see that whilst the majority of the colour is this rather drab looking grey plastic the gold and darker gunmetal highlights definitely set the detailing apart and you can see some really nice paint apps there for the eyes where you can pick out the segmented section here where it actually separates from one eye and then the other eye is there at the top and that is the same detailing here for the opposite side no Decepticon insignia on Starscream's crest which is unfortunate it would have been nice if they could have put a small Decepticon insignia as I believe the actual CGI model does have one but you can see the sculpt is so nicely done and if we just lift the neck up you can see all the gold detailing there has been painted really nicely and turning to the torso detailing this is what just amazes me beyond belief all of this looks amazing has been painted so so nicely with the gunmetal silver that they've used and all of the sculpting and detailing here on these panels look fantastic and I do actually like the weathered effect that they've got here where it makes these look slightly more worn and weathered that all looks really nice you've got the piston detailing here 
all of the sculpted and mechanical panels here and I absolutely love how the cockpit is still evident here and it is the real cockpit it's not a faux cockpit and all of this is just happening around it it looks like a very complex and really interesting looking design and another thing which I love about this figure and something that made me extremely excited about him when seeing that promotional trailer of it was that this figure is in fact layered there are multiple layers there's the front layer middle layer and of course a few back layers which is just so authentic to Starscream of course he's very panelly in the movie he's definitely got lots of wings and fins and I think here they've captured that amazingly even these back panels have got some nice sculpting and detailing in them and turning to the arms this whole section here is die cast I think the sculpt work on this is fantastic and you can see some nice sculpting and detailing here the wiring detailing and the fingers are by far one of the standouts for me these are so well detailed they're almost something that you'd expect on like a third party or a statue of Starscream something from Prime 1 Studios or 3A Definitely superb amount of detail on them. They've even got the little spikes on where the knuckles would be. Super, super cool attention to detail. We turn to the crutch plate and of course the mechanical detail continues. As you rotate this section as well, there's also some nice sculpting and detailing there. And turning to the thighs, the chicken leg design is of course as ever present. And you can see the very complex design. You've got the pistons sticking out the back. All of that sculpt work, just truly, truly remarkable. I think the detailing on the thrusters has been done super nicely as well. And when you open up these panels, there's also detailing behind them. The MPM line is just knocking it out of the park with some of their latest releases. I think Megatron, Jazz, Starscream, all of them are really well done. They definitely did step up their game when they got to MPM Jazz. And here with Starscream, it really does seem as if though they're following trend with what they set with that release. Now, turning to a slight area of criticism that I have, which may or may not be Hasbro and Takara's fault, it's actually the overall colour scheme of the figure. Now, of course, this is based on Starscream's first movie appearance, where he was a little bit more plain in his colour scheme than what we saw in ROTF and DOTM. But for me, there are some areas which I just think would have been greatly amplified if perhaps they could have been painted silver. But then, seeing as how much this whole torso region transforms, it probably would have been really prone to paint chipping so perhaps it is a benefit but in some ways it is a con you can see that the legs look really drab or just this plain grey plastic doesn't feel very premium at all if they would have just given some nice silver highlights perhaps some nice wiring detailing like they did with the arms or some of these joints I think that that would have greatly improved its overall look but definitely the color scheme on this one is something that I wish they would have improved and I do hope that they reuse this and just repaint this up into an ROTF deco as I will definitely pick that up and really think that that will amplify the look. Now, getting down to MPM 10 Starscream's articulation, this is where the majority of my problems lay. The articulation on this figure doesn't feel as if though it is MPM quality, and some of the areas which lack in articulation are areas that I really just think they could have put joints in. So to begin with, we'll start off with the head. Once again, for some reason, they're not using a ball jointed system. I have no idea why they don't use ball joints for the heads on MPM figures, as in my opinion, it just lacks versatility and doesn't allow you to achieve some of the really awesome poses that perhaps you would want to. But nonetheless, the articulation is suffice. We do get a hinge joint allowing the head to look up and down. And of course, it can swivel side to side. But if we had a ball joint, we could lift it up, we could tilt it side to side. And of course, with just a hinge joint, you are unable to do that. As with the majority of MPM releases, the mouth is articulated, so you can open and close the jaw, which is quite nice. I do like that feature. Turning to the articulation of the arms, the arms are on ratchet joints forwards and backwards. This section here can also hinge forwards and backwards as well. However, that's mainly due to transformation. We have a soft ratchet here for the outer range of motion. I do wish that this was actually a spring-loaded mechanism, as when you do actually install some of the weapons, which I'll show later on, it can weigh these ratchet joints down. We do get a soft ratchet joint here for the elbow and a swivel below where the elbow joint is. Now, I really wish there was a swivel here as there's been so many times where I just want to rotate this in and hinge this inwards as it doesn't allow you to bring the arms forwards into his chest at all, which of course, Starscream's constantly bringing his hands together, messing around with his fingers, leaning and bowing to Megatron. You are unable to pull off any of that type of posing with this lack of articulation. So it's so unfortunate that we cannot rotate the arm inwards so that we can get it more towards the torso this is as close as they will come together which i just think is such a letdown unless you begin mistransforming all this which i will show you that very quickly but it does just look really ugly you see it is achievable but then you've got these really dangly joints which i just think look awful and once again i think that that is an area that they could have designed a lot lot better for this release turning to the articulation here for the hands this is where i actually think this figure excels 
we do get a rotation here allowing for a full 360 degree range of motion a hinge joint here as well as a second hinge joint here the thumbs can hinge up and down as well as in and out which is super cool and all of the fingers are individually articulated as well allowing you to get them into some very menacing poses which is a really nice attention to detail turning to the articulation of this whole upper section this section here can hinge forwards and backwards which is super cool so you can in fact hinge the arms forwards and backwards but once again it would have been cool if this could have butterflied forwards as that is really the range of motion I think you would want to get out of this joint rather than a backwards range of motion. The wings here can hinge forwards and backwards as well as be risen up and down which is super cool and if we turn around to the back these flaps here can also be hinged forwards and backwards and these thrusters are on ball joints so it can be rotated as well as hinged on these double hinge joints here so great articulation there for the back just not great articulation for these joints here. No waist articulation. Why can't they implement waist articulation onto Starscream figures for the movies? No movie Starscream figure that I know of can rotate its waist and the movie masterpiece version can't either. That is something that I really wish they would have found a way to have done as it would have set this figure apart from the previously released ROTF leader. The legs however can kick forwards that far on ratchet joints, they can kick backwards that far, they can ratchet out to the sides hinge here due to transformation but also can be utilized there for robot mode a ratchet joint here allowing for a great range of motion but you can see this tab can easily begin to unlock itself when you begin messing around with these ratchet joints we do get a ratchet joint here for the lower section as well as a rotation joint and the feet are actually loaded with articulation so we get a hinge joint side to side as well as forwards and backwards so great range of motion there for the lower section of the legs but just the torso and these sections here i think are greatly lacking a few other problems that I have with this particular release of Starscream are mainly to do with this whole lower region. Now the first problem is more of an aesthetic problem and it is the sense that this entire section here just hangs off the back and it looks so so unsightly especially from the front as he just has this rather cuboid looking section dangling down. Now if this was removed it would have created for a very movie accurate look but seeing as it's here it just definitely is an eyesore and I'm sure there is a way they could have found this to have rotated up or just swiveled around or something. They definitely could have gotten this out of the way and another problem which could be a make or break for some people is the joints in the legs now I'm not sure if you were aware but throughout this review there has been certain instances where I've just been running to grab the figure before it falls over and that's because he's so top heavy but they've only put his feet on hinge joints which means that they just want to continuously keep sliding forwards and sliding backwards these joints here should have been ratchet joints much like they were here for the knees as it would have helped for posability as well as stability so definitely be cautious of these as you can see he just wants to lean backwards because these are unfortunately unable to lock into place. Now turning to MPM 10's accessories, we'll start off first here with this minigun. This has been really nicely molded and the detailing on this is fantastic. I also really like the feature that this can indeed rotate as it makes stop motion and photography really really versatile. So that's a nice attention to detail and it's something that they didn't have to include and just makes this accessory slightly more interesting. It would have been nice once again if they could have put some paint on this, a nice silver paint or perhaps painted some of the wiring detailing greatly would have set this apart from the rest of the figure but nonetheless I think that the sculpt is all there and it does look rather nice with the barrel there and it does just slot onto either of his forearms utilizing this tab and port so just you showing you this you just want to tab that into place and there you have Starscream wielding his minigun which is a really nice attention to detail another really nice accessory that this figure comes with is the buzzsaw. Now this is an accessory that we don't tend to see on Starscream figures all that much and is actually my favourite accessory and weapon that he uses throughout all of his appearances in the movie. I believe the only other... And that is the problem that I was talking about in regards to the ankles. But back on to the accessories, the only other time we've seen a buzzsaw with a Starscream figure is the more recent ROTF Studio series and you can see here that the detail is really nice and the faithful to the on-screen CGI model too the accuracy is phenomenal. The blade here has been painted in a nice silver with a darker wash just to bring out some of the details and make it look metal which I think it does a great job of doing so and you can see here it does spin really nicely as well. In order to implement it onto the hand you simply want to take this section here and just fold it back and hinge out the thumbs. We can then take this slot and just peg that in there and then this slot here will tab into the forearm and there we have Starscream utilizing his buzzsaw 
And once again, this is where I wish this could go over so we could have it more where his head is to make it look as if he's going to slice someone with it. But you cannot hinge this over to where his head is, nor get it in an angular motion to make it look as if though he's just about to whack an Autobot with it either, which is unfortunate. But just detaching that and turning to the final accessory that he comes with it is, of course, his signature missile launcher, which he's more familiar to having. And I think the detailing on this is really nice. All of the missiles, as well as these bayonet pieces, are made out of a rubbery plastic. But nice detailing. And this whole section here can rotate in whatever orientation you so desire it to. And then you just port this in there and snap that in there. And there we have Starscream with his missile launcher. We can indeed store all of these accessories actually in robot mode as well. However, the weapon storage is rather ghastly. So you can see here some ports on the back. So we just want to align these up. I believe the buzz saw goes into this one. So you can just snap that into place. The missile launcher goes into this one. And then the small mini gun tabs into this one. So you can store all of the weapons on the back. However, as you can see, you do have a buzz saw just protruding from one of the fins of the figure. Now, something that I know many of you will be asking yourselves is where are the diecast pieces distributed on this figure? And quite honestly, he doesn't really have that many diecast pieces, which is unfortunate seeing as other figures such as Ironhide, Optimus Prime, and even Bumblebee, I believe had more diecast in them than this figure does. But getting straight onto it, this figure has diecast here for these top sections of his arms. He only has it here for the front panel and not the back. So it is simply just this plate here and this plate here. And the only other area that he has it is on these very thin pieces down here. This whole foot section here is made of die cast, but it's not heavy enough to weigh him down. Hence why I believe he does have some balancing issues. It would have been cool if they could have put some die cast in this section, as I think that it would have greatly helped to have gravitated the figure more towards the ground and stopped him from toppling over. But that's mainly due to the fact that this whole hinge joint is really badly designed and should have been a spring-loaded ratchet from the start. For a movie masterpiece size comparison, here I have the new MPM-10 Starscream compared next to which was my most accurate representation of a transformable Starscream, the original Revenge of the Fallen Leader class, and despite me still really loving the original figure, I've got to say that when comparing the two, the new MPM version is just proportionally a lot more accurate to what we see in the movie. I think that the overall design of him is just so much more faithful than what we saw in the movie, and of course he's a lot more detailed than this. Now this is a leader class and this is a masterpiece so of course there is going to be differences in terms of the overall complexity as well as the detail but this figure is quite complex and was even made into and repainted into an MPM-1. I believe that it was done in the same colour scheme as this was so Takara obviously thought that they struck gold with this original transformation which they did as I still think this stacks up and holds up really nicely today but I've got to be honest in saying that whilst this is a really nice figure I do think that the MPM version overall looks a lot more faithful to what we see in the movie. For another quick size comparison, here we have MPM-10 compared next to Studio Series movie Starscream. And you can see whilst the Studio Series is just a Voyager, I think that they did a really good job with this seeing as it is a budgeted release. Comparing the two, you can see though that the MPM is just significantly taller and is 10 times more detailed back, front and sideways. This really is a fantastic looking figure despite some of its flaws in regards to articulation and its overall stability. And then of course I had to compare MPM Starscream next to his leader, MPM Megatron, and I think that the scale between these two is perfect. Of course, I have Starscream's legs chicken-legged as they really should be, and I think that this is his natural stance, so I think that these two definitely pair really nicely with one another, and especially when we see these two at Hoover Dam, and Megatron's asking where the Allspark is, this is definitely the type of scale that we see between these two, so definitely these are, I believe, the best representations of Megatron and Starscream that we've gotten officially from Hasbro and Takara Tomy. And for a comparison amongst some of the Autobot MPM figures, you can see here that Starscream definitely has a huge presence. Very broad in his upper design and very large as well, almost towing eye to eye with Optimus Prime. And of course, you can extend those legs to make him probably one of the biggest MPM figures. I think that he scowls and looks fantastically with the rest of the crew. I just cannot wait to add an MPM 11 ratchet to our Autobot cast in order to really close off the Autobot MPM characters. So that was my review on the brand new Transformers Movie Masterpiece MPM-10 Movie 1 Starscream. As you can probably guess from this review, whilst there may be some negatives, there are definitely more positives. This figure looks incredible. In robot mode, he is by far the most accurate and the best representation we have gotten for Starscream from his Movie 1 appearance. And I really do hope that Hasbro and Takara take this mould in the future and give us a redeco of his DOTM slash ROTF colour scheme, as I definitely think that will make him look visually a lot 
lot more appealing. You can see here for robot mode, the, all of the detail here in the torso is just mind blowing. The detailing for the legs and the fingers look incredible. And I think his accessories are tremendous. I absolutely love how they've actually managed to sculpt and mold his back to match his movie appearance as well. All of the different flaps and the jet thrusters are a really nice attention to detail. And the fact that all of the back section is indeed articulated definitely makes this figure worth the price in my opinion. Where this figure does fall slightly short is in terms of the articulation and the stability. Seeing as how top heavy he is, Takara Tomi definitely should have ensured that these hinge joints in the feet were ratcheted as as you saw throughout this review I was struggling in some instances to keep him stood up and seeing as he is just a larger character at the top overall I think ratchet joints really should have been a no brainer there for where the ankles are. But setting that off to the side and setting the fact that you can't really hinge the arms in, robot mode I cannot fault it whatsoever. I think that it's perfect, it looks how movie Starscream is supposed to look and I really do like some of the accessories that this figure also comes with. Transformation I don't think is too complex, it's definitely not your standard Hasbro leader Voyager or Deluxe, it definitely feels a little bit more involved than them but the transformation is fun to go through and I have done it back and forth from robot mode to jet mode and vice versa multiple times and I think that jet mode looks really awesome as well other than in some areas where it does have some slight undercarriage but you're never going to get away from that regardless of how involved your transformations are. So in all do I recommend this figure? I would say definitely. This is by far the best representation we've gotten for a transformable Starscream and I honestly don't think that anything official from Hasbro and Takara Tomy is going to beat this whatsoever. If this release does anything else for me it's that it makes me extremely excited to see what Hasbro and Takara Tomy do with the upcoming MPM 11 Ratchet as by the looks of things the MPM line is just going from strength to strength with each of their releases. I really hope that you enjoyed my review if you did please do let me know down in the comment section below and also be sure to let me know whether or not you plan on adding Starscream to your collection or if you'll suffice with your previous R TF leader or your studio series Voyager. I hope that you enjoyed the video and until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.